So the next presenter is Dr. Heinz Toll, who's a sports medicine physician. I had the great pleasure of working with him here at Aspitar for three years. He's still got an important role at Aspitar as the coordinator of clinical research. His presentation is on the clinical care of acute muscle injuries at Aspitar. Thank you very much, and uh, Professor Nebel, thanks for the invitation for this conference. I all hope you will like to talk. Try to find the next slide. As you might imagine, there's nobody in the world who want to pay for me, so no disclosure. And this is the most important slide of my presentation. And why is this the most important slide? This is the most important slide because it shows that most of the countries from the GCC that they are still in the race for the World Cup in Russia. And there's no doubt that you all will qualify, but one thing you will all have in common is that you have to deal with hamstring injuries if you want to qualify for Russia 2018. So this is uh, what we see at ESPTA, and what we can learn from this slide that most of the hamstring injuries and muscle injuries, they are from the Middle East. And once they have their muscle injury, they will be first seen by our colleagues from the National Sports Medicine Program. So all the credit for them, because that's where the injury starts. And then they are, if it's a severe injury, they are sent to Espata, and they are seen by the, this team. So these are my colleagues from the sports medicine team, and I'm just a presenter, but all the credits for them because together as a team, we did all this work. We go back in history, I think this is 10 years ago. Somebody remember this guy? Messi, when he was a young guy. I think this was also the time when we started doing research at Espata on hamstring injuries. And when Messi got his injury, he's got only four questions. First, when I get my MRI. When can I play? When can I safely return to play? And I don't want to have a second injury. These are the key questions from each player. So we are doing research at Espata, but only based on what the player wants. So in this talk, we only have to answer these four simple questions. And this lady is going to help us to answer these questions. She is doing a PhD on it. So the first question, of course, even before they are injured, they want an MRI. And when you look now in the literature, they will say, okay, you have to do an MRI, you have to wait 48 hours, or you have to do it within 24 hours, or you have to wait for five days. But up till two, three weeks ago, there was absolutely no evidence. And when we look at these slides, so you see several days for several players, and the key message of this slide is, when you look at edema, it will not change over time. So if you do an MRI on day one or on day seven, it will all be the same. So that means there's less stress because you can wait seven days or you can give a proper diagnosis even within the first day. I think it's very important information when, we, when you want to qualify for 2018. But then, of course, they said, okay, but I don't want to see fiber, of, I want to, don't see edema, but I want to detect fiber disruption. And what you normally read in all these books, that for fiber disruption, you have to wait for the hematoma. So you have to wait at least one day before detecting fiber disruption. But in our athletes, we were able to detect the fiber disruption on day one. And as shown in this slide, so on day one, you can already detect the fiber disruption. So there's no need if you want an MRI, there's no need to wait a little bit longer. So to answer the first question for, Maf, uh, for Messi, but maybe also for Ahmed Khalil from uh, the Emirates, you can do your MRI if you want it on each day after an injury. And then the second question, and that's the most important question for the player, when can I play? And Dr. Ahmad already discussed something and in this slide, I want to show you that it is almost useless to do an MRI. And Professor Popovich, Popovich would say, bye-bye MRI. And you can show, I can show it on, on this slide. So normally, when a player comes in with a muscle injury, at forehand, you will know 95% of the players, they will return to play between 1 and 45 days. 
And imagine you've got a crystal ball, and we call the crystal ball MRI for predicting. And you've got all the information, all the information you get from the MRI, and you're going to use it. This is what's going to happen. You can tell to your player that he will return to play between 5 and 42 days, if you only use MRI. But when we were at university, we were trained to listen uh, to the patient, to palpate, to use our eyes, ears, and hands. So this is what's happened when you just do your normal clinical practice. So these are data from the rehab department. So you just examine your player on day one, and you examine them on the seventh day. Just with simple clinical examination where we were teach when we were at university. And then you are quite reliable, because then you can predict between about two weeks and three weeks. So the key message of this, okay, you can use MRI, but it's not the black box, it's not the magic tool. We really have to trust our clinical skills and talk with our athletes. So the second question, I think it will be also the same for the player from Saudi, Mohammed Noor, if he wants to have an answer, we first have to focus on physical examination and MRI, you might use or not. Third question, I think that is now a hot topic in uh, sports medicine. We want to find criteria for return to play. And when you come to most of the conference, normally what they will say, you have to have a normal strength. What is a normal strength? A normal strength is normally defined of less than 10% difference to the other side. So these are figures from our slide. You just have to focus on the red one. And at return to play, so the player is back on the field, two out of three, two out of three players will have a deficit of strength. But they are playing with a normal re-injury risk. So isokinetic strength testing at return to play is probably useless when you compare it with the frontolateral leg. And this was started with a simple question from a player, and we did research on it, and it really changed our clinical practice. This one was quickly uh, showed already by Emat, and I just focus on return to play. Yes, there will be edema. Uh, so it's useless to use MRI for your decision at return to play. But some of you might argue, but at return to play, when I see fibrosis, there will be an increase of re-injury. That's also nonsense. So you can have fibrosis at return to play, but the risk of re-injury is not increased by the fibrosis in the muscle. And I just mentioned already, now almost every month we've got a, a conference on criteria at return to play. So we are completely focusing on the day when we have to make the decision uh, return to play, yes or not. And at ESPTA, the rehab department, they are a little bit more clever because they say return to play starts after injury. So why wait with all your criteria till return to play if you can measure them during week zero, so at injury and return to play? And there's a lot of information on that, but what you can learn from this slide is that before they come to the decision at return to play, they have to meet 11 criteria. So 11 criteria you have to meet before you even think about return to play. And I think that is more, more important than defining all these criteria at return to play. We have to think what's going to happen before, because then we've got time enough. And the question, of course, is does that work? Does the program of rehab, and Rod Whiteley will uh, speak a bit more about it, does it really work? When we compare it with the UEFA studies, the mean return to play is 27 days. At ESPTA, for the same injuries, it's 25 days, so almost comparable. But with this program, and I think that's the strength of the rehab program at ESPTA, and Rod will talk about it a little bit more, is that the re-injury rate is 7% compared to the Champions League teams in uh, Europe. I think it's a good thing to think about. So the third question can also be for Musa Nedan. So when can I safely return to play? The key message is think before. So think already about it at injury 
and please forget MRI and isokinetic testing in your decision. First question of, uh, the fourth question of Messi or somebody else is, okay, I'm returning to play, but when I am at risk for a re-injury, and these are some recent data from ESPETA, and what we can learn from this slide, so on the y-axis you see the number of patients who got a re-injury, and on the x-axis you see the weeks between return to play and re-injury. And what we can learn here is that, and that's a golden five rule, 50% will have a re-injury in five weeks. So it's very easy to remember, 50% in five weeks. And when you start looking at the days from initial injury, then it's the 55 rule. So 50% of the players will have a re-injury within 50 days after injury. So five weeks after re-injury and 50 days after re-injury. And are these really new injuries? And yes, they are, especially during the first six, six weeks the re-injury occurs at the same place as the first injury. And that's shown in this slide. So the final question, it can also be for Ismail Abdul Latif from, uh, from Bahrain. When I'm at risk of re-injuries, please think about the 50 rule, 50 days after injury, five weeks after return to play, and one out of five will have a re-injury. To summarize, and then this is a slide from Carl Van from Qatar. He will have the same question when he comes to us. When can I get my MRI? If you want to get an MRI, you can have it on each day. When can I play again? I think that's the key message. Rely on your clinical skills and say bye-bye to MRI for predicting. Maybe for diagnosing, but for predicting, bye-bye MRI. When can I safely return to play? Again, MRI will not help you. Isokinetic strengths will probably not help you. It's again it's clinical skills and monitor them during the weeks before they are at return to play. And the final question, when I'm at risk for re-injury, it's the golden five rule, 550, 50% uh, within five weeks after return to play. And all this work we also summarized in a muscle guide. It's for free. We worked on it for two years with our colleagues from FC Barcelona. So it's for elite athletes, but also uh, recreational athletes. And I will put it, or I will ask somebody to help me to put it on Twitter because I'm not so technical. And it will be for free at Twitter. And I think will be linked to the Espada Twitter account. Thank you very much.